Hello there, Mike here. So this one is a is a blast from the past. This article popped up on Hacker News today, and I thought it was a very very interesting. It's from 2014. I do remember reading this quite a while ago. Nightmare: A DevOps cautionary tale. Long story short, someone needed to deploy some software to to eight servers in total, and they deployed the correct software to seven servers and the incorrect software to the eighth server with the wrong features enabled, the wrong code in place. And again, long story short, it resulted in $400 million in assets being burned, burned through. $400 million in effectively liquid cash being burned in 45 minutes. And so the whole idea behind this article is essentially do DevOps. So if we if we look at this, um, the the SEC filing is during the deployments of the new code. However, one of Knight's technicians did not copy the new code to one of the eight smart computer servers. So this is this is pretty critical here. Knight's technicians did not copy the new code. That's that's that, that's what we call a human error there. So that's really important. Hold, hold on to that. Knight did not have a second technician review the deployment. Did not have a second technician review the deployment. So that's a failure a failure in, in human processes. So hold on to that one as well. No one at night realized the PowerPeg code had not been removed from the 8th server, nor the new RLP code added to the 8th server. Knight had no written procedures that required such a review. So there's a third thing to hold on to there. So it goes on to men goes into a little bit more detail as to, as to what happened in the article. I'll leave a link to it in the in the description below so you can check it out yourself if you've not seen it on Hacker News. You should be using Hacker News by the way, news.ycombinator.com. I'll leave a link in the description. But effectively 45 minutes after they deployed this code, the incorrectly on the Ape server, they realized they were about 400 to uh, roughly roughly 460 million dollar loss in in 45 minutes there seems to be a few various figures in the article but let's just go with 400 million so 400 million dollars i like the lessons at the end here a couple of principles for continuous delivery now remember that cicd underpins devops see continuous integration continuous delivery underpin the whole concept of devops so devops is made up of lots of different things but cicd is definitely one of the core pillars a couple of principles for continuous delivery apply here, even if you are not implementing a full continuous delivery process. Releasing software should be a repeatable, reliable process, correct? Automate as much as is reasonably possible. I couldn't agree more. I think that's absolutely perfect. So ultimately, again, CICD underpin DevOps, and this is a DevOps cautionary tale. That's what that's what this article is effectively about. So what were the three things that we... That we that we picked up there in that SEC SEC filing report, that little snippet that we just read, basically human error, human error, and human error. So they didn't have everything defined as code. So because they didn't have it defined as code, it wasn't sat in a Git repository, which means that the main branch couldn't be protected, so that no one could push to it directly. Which means that no one was doing a pu a, pu a pull request for the with their changes. They therefore did not have it set up so that the person who authored the pull request couldn't review their own couldn't accept and approve their own pull request that was forcing oops that was forcing another technician to review that pull request and then when it was accepted then it gets merged and then an automated process goes off they had none of that what they had would have been a notepad with with text on it called a run buck and it's a really old way of working i used to work like that in some companies in the past, I'm not going to say names, but they worked like that in the past. They had run box processes that you followed step by step. That's all gone now in those kind of organizations. It's all Ansible or, or Puppet or whatever whatever tool that you use. But it's basically automated through con continuous integration, continuous delivery, using tools like configuration management, infrastructure as code, and then using things like GitOps, which is, again, like I say, making sure that you can't push directly to main, only deploying from main, using pull requests to get code into main, not allowing people to accept their own PRs. They have to be reviewed by someone else. And so everything about this is just human error, human error, human error. So that's interesting in and of itself, but there was something else I wanted to show you. And that was the comments, one of the comments on Hacker News, which I thought was a really, really interesting comment and um, frankly wrong, really, really badly wrong. So this person said, I'm not sure how automated deployments would have solved this problem. In fact, if anything, it would have magnified the impact and the fallout of the problem. Interesting. Substitute a developer forgot to upload the code to one of the servers for the deployment agent errored while downloading the new binary code slash code onto the server and a bug in the agent prevented the error from being serviced. Now you have the same failure mode and the impact happens even faster. 
okay? The blame here lies squarely with developers, okay? The code was written in a non-backwards compatible way. Yikes, no. Um, you don't you don't get automation at all. So this is this is my response here, this 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 big block. So I've said um, CICD would have solved this 100%. And I made it clear that we point out this specific part. One of Knight's technicians did not copy the new code to one of the eight SMARS computer servers. And I go on to say, yes, CICD pipelines are fallible because they're written by humans who are fallible. Humans make mistakes. So therefore, CICD pipelines can make mistakes. But a CICD pipeline can be tested before it goes anywhere near production. You can test a CICD pipeline in an automated process 150 times until you absolutely nail it and you go through lots of edge cases, you throw lots of garbage at it until it just works really, really well, and then that becomes your deployment process. So therefore, I doubt that a properly managed CICD process would actually fail. CICD would absolutely solve this. This is why CICD, DevOps, automation, GitOps, etc., are a thing. This is why platform engineering is a thing. And then I go on to highlight the next part. Knight did not have a second technician review this deployment, and no one at Knight realized that the PowerPeg code had not been removed from the eighth server. And then I go on to say, CICD would have solved this 100%. A pull request made against a repository of Ansible code would have prevented the first technician from ever being able to merge the code into master slash main, because you're protecting master and main, right? Right? You're doing that, right? Completely preventing the entire process from ever rolling out without a review, which would have hopefully caught the misaligned configuration. It probably would have done. I, I'm quite confident. DevOps, which is mostly underpinned by CICD, would have solved this 100%. I am very certain of this. And I am very, very certain of this because I've, I've taken these processes and I've built the CICD pipelines. I've automated them and I've made it so that you can't deploy a piece of software that's, that's not the same on all multiple servers. I've had entire clusters of servers where we don't roll out new cloud servers, we don't create a new AMI and put them out, it's update in place, and the update has to go across the whole board. It's very easy to just put a new binary on all the systems, put a new configuration on all the systems, and then before you then tell the service to restart, you go and check the hash of everything on all of the servers, of all of the binaries, on all of the configs. And if any of them come back different, you don't have the right code on that server. You don't have the right configuration on that server. But if everything is fine, then you go ahead and you do the deployment. It's really, really rather quite simple. It's not actually that difficult to do when you when you obviously know how to use the tools. So I completely disagree. It's, this is a DevOps cautionary tale. DevOps would have completely and utterly annihilated this problem. It would have prevented it. And this company will be $400 million better off. So frankly, DevOps rules.